Welcome to this tutorial on Ambulance Basics, Types of Transport and Personnel. The information given in this training is correct as of October 2021. The most current information contained in this presentation can be found on the Nerdian website and the CMS website at the links listed on this slide. During the public health emergency, for the COVID-19 pandemic, CMS is temporarily expanding the list of allowable destinations for ambulance transports. During the PHE, ambulance transports may include any destination that is able to provide treatment to the patient in a manner consistent with state and local emergency medical services protocols in use where the services are being furnished. These destinations may include but are not limited to any location that is an alternative site determined to be a part of a hospital, critical access hospital or skilled nursing facility, community mental health centers, federally qualified health centers, physician's offices, urgent care facilities, ambulatory surgery centers, any other location furnishing dialysis services outside of the ESRD facility, and the beneficiary's home. Please visit the links provided for more information. Medicare Part B covers ambulance services only if other means of transportation would endanger the beneficiary's health. Ambulance services are listed in the Federal Register in the Code of Federal Regulations or CFR subsection 410. The CFR lays the ground rules for ambulance coverage. If a patient could travel by any other form of transportation without endangering their health, then the ambulance transport is not covered by Medicare. The Medicare beneficiary would be liable for payment. As an ambulance provider, you may furnish ground and air Medicare ambulance transportation to a beneficiary when all of these criteria are met. The transportation is medically necessary. Any other means of transportation is contraindicated and the destination is to the nearest appropriate facility that can treat the beneficiary's condition. If a beneficiary could travel safely by other means, such as a car, taxi, gurney van, wheelchair van, stretcher van, etc., they need to take this means of transportation as Medicare will not cover ambulance trip. Even if there are none available in the area, Medicare would not pay as this does not meet criteria. The nature of an ambulance's response, whether emergency or not, does not independently establish or support medical necessity for that transport. Medicare coverage always depends on, among other things, whether the services furnished are actually medically reasonable and necessary based on the patient's condition at the time of the transport. To read more about medical necessity, you can refer to IOM Publication 100-2, Chapter 10. There are several categories of ground ambulance services and two categories of air ambulance services. These can be found in the IOM 100-2, Chapter 10, Subsection 30.1.1. Cover destinations for ground ambulance transport. When all other program requirements for coverage are met, ground ambulance transports are covered only to and from these destinations. Medicare covers ambulance transport emergency situations to a hospital or critical access hospitals. Medicare payment is rarely covered to and from dialysis facilities for end-stage renal disease beneficiaries who require dialysis, SNF, beneficiaries residents, or a physician's office for a temporary stop en route to the hospital, where the trip is expected to be a prolonged and the physician may render care to help stabilize the patient. 
If you have a destination that is not in the list above, you may not have a covered trip. A beneficiary may be transported on land or on water for a ground ambulance transport. Ground ambulance transports include these levels of service. Basic Life Support, BLS, Advanced Life Support, Level 1, ALS 1, Advanced Life Support, Level 2, ALS 2. Listed here are the categories and HICPICS codes applicable for each level of service. Ambulance service levels are distinct and separated by equipment and supplies carried in the transport and by the training qualifications of the crew. Here are the six Medicare covered levels of services or provisions with emergent and non-emergent involved. Basic Life Support, BLS, is transportation by ground or water ambulance vehicle defined by the state. The ambulance must be staffed by an individual who is qualified in accordance with state and local laws as an emergency medical technician basic, EMT basic. These laws may vary from state to state or within the state. Basic life support, BLS, includes the provision of medically necessary supplies and services and BLS ambulance transportation as defined by the state where you provide the transport. An emergency response is one that, at the time you are called, you respond immediately. A BLS emergency is an immediate emergency response in which you begin as quickly as possible to take the steps necessary to respond to the call. BLS is non-invasive procedures and techniques provided by certified EMTs. With Advanced Life Support Level 1, ALS 1, this includes services of an ALS assessment or at least one ALS intervention. An ALS assessment is performed by an ALS crew as part of an emergency response that is necessary because the beneficiary's reported condition at the time of dispatch indicates only an ALS crew is qualified to perform the assessment. This includes an emergency medical technician intermediate, EMT intermediate, or an EMT paramedic in accordance with state and local laws. An ALS assessment does not necessarily result in a beneficiary requiring an ALS level of support. In the case of an appropriately dispatched ALS emergency service, if the ALS crew completes an ALS assessment, the services provided may be covered at the ALS emergency level. This is regardless of whether the beneficiary required ALS intervention services during the transport, provided the ambulance transportation itself was medically reasonable and necessary. Advanced Life Support Level 2, ALS 2, covers the transportation by ground ambulance that includes medically necessary supplies and services involving at least three separate administrations of one or more medications by IV push bolus or by continuous infusion, excluding crystalloid fluids, or at least one of these ALS2 procedures, manual defibrillation, cardioversion, endotracheal intubation, central venous line, cardiac pacing, chest decompression, surgical airway, or interosseous line. A0434, Specialty Care Transport, SCT, aka Interfacility, includes the provision of medically necessary supplies and services at a level of service beyond the scope of an EMT paramedic. SCT is the interfacility transportation of a critically ill or injured beneficiary that is necessary because the beneficiary's condition requires ongoing care furnished by one or more professionals in an appropriate specialty, such as emergency or critical care nursing, emergency medicine, respiratory or cardiovascular care, or an EMT paramedic with additional training. To be clear, if EMT paramedics are without specialty care certification or qualification, 
and are permitted to furnish a given service in the state, then that service does not necessarily qualify for SCT and may be downcoded to a lower level. A beneficiary may be transported by fixed wing, airplane, or rotary wing helicopter aircraft for a medically necessary air ambulance transport. For fixed wing air ambulance, use HICPIX code A0430. Fixed wing is the aircraft transportation, can be a regular plane or seaplane in some areas, that is certified by the Federal Aviation Administration, including the provision of medically necessary services and supplies. For rotary wing air ambulance, use HICPIX code A0431 and that includes your helicopters certified by the Federal Aviation Administration. In order for air ambulance to be payable, a beneficiary's medical condition is such that transport by ground ambulance in whole or in part would endanger their life. It's obviously necessary because their condition requires rapid transport to a treatment facility. Either great distances or other obstacles such as heavy traffic, prohibit ground support, or because where the patient is located is inaccessible by a land or water ambulance. Only payable with destination modifier H, hospital, or I, site of transfer, with ultimate destination to hospital. Medical reasonableness is only established when the beneficiary's condition is such that the time needed to transport a beneficiary by ground or the instability of transportation by ground poses a threat to the beneficiary's survival or seriously endangers the beneficiary's health. Following is an advisory list of examples of cases for which air ambulance could be justified. Intracranial bleeding requiring neurosurgical intervention cardiogenic shock, burns requiring treatment in a burn center, conditions requiring treatment in a hyperbaric oxygen unit, multiple severe injuries, or life-threatening trauma. The list is not inclusive of all situations that justify air transportation, nor is it intended to justify air transport. Coverage is not available for transport from a hospital capable of treating the patient because the patient or patient's family prefer a specific hospital or physician. When all other program requirements for coverage are met, air ambulance transports are covered to acute care hospital only, non-covered to nursing facilities, physician's offices, and beneficiaries' home. Any vehicle used as an ambulance, ground or air, must be designed and equipped to respond to medical emergencies and, in non-emergency situations, be capable of transporting beneficiaries with acute medical conditions. The vehicle must comply with state or local laws governing the licensing and certification of an emergency medical transportation vehicle. Air ambulance providers would need to meet all requirements of state and local laws governing the licensing and certification of an air ambulance, whether it is fixed wing or rotary aircraft. These are all considered part of the general ambulance service and payment for them is included in the payment rate for the transport. These regulations are outlined in the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS, Internet Only Manual, IOM 100-2, Chapter 10. All vehicle requirements will be verified during the on-site initial revalidation, or other provider enrollment inspections. The following are for regular ambulance, and please note that a specialty care transport, or SCT, would have its own requirements. At a minimum, ambulance vehicles must be equipped with the following, a stretcher, linens, emergency medical supplies, oxygen equipment, other life-saving emergency medical equipment, emergency warning lights, sirens, and telecommunications equipment as required by state or local law, and a two-way voice radio or wireless telephone. 
In non-emergency situations, ambulance vehicles must be capable of transporting beneficiaries with acute medical conditions. A BLS ambulance vehicle must be staffed by at least two people who meet the requirements of state and local laws where the services are being furnished, and at least one of the staff members must be certified in accordance with the state and local laws at a minimum as an EMT basic and is legally authorized to operate all life-saving and life-sustaining equipment on board the vehicle. These laws may vary from state to state or within state. An ALS ambulance vehicle must be staffed by at least two people who meet the requirements of state and local laws where the services are being furnished, and at least one staff member who meets the vehicle staffing requirements above for a BLS ambulance vehicle and is certified in accordance with applicable state and local laws where the services are being furnished to perform one or more ALS services as an EMT intermediate or an EMT paramedic. CMS IOM are the rules and regulations that govern the Medicare program found at cms.gov forward slash manuals with a couple of the publications listed here. There is also the CMS Ambulance Service Center with fee schedules, articles, open door forums, etc. And then the Medicare Ground Ambulance Data Collection System. Effective January 1st, 2020 and continuing through 2024, ground ambulance providers and suppliers that have been selected to participate in the Medicare Ground Ambulance Data Collection System must collect information on cost, utilization, revenue, and other service characteristics in accordance with the Medicare Ground Ambulance Data Collection Instrument for a continuous 12-month period. Thank you for taking the time to listen to our tutorial. Continue your learning experience by referring to additional recordings available on the Noridian website or YouTube channel.